Trailer Makers have two games coming up this week. They'll hit the road on Wednesday night to take on the Northwestern Wildcats in the only regular season meeting between the teams. That game will tip off at 8 o'clock Eastern. And then on Saturday, Purdue comes back home to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the team that beat Purdue earlier this season in Pinnacle Bank Arena. That one will tip off at 4 o'clock. Good evening, everybody. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're with the Boilermaker head coach, and we'll be talking Purdue basketball until the top of the hour. You can follow along on Purdue Athletics site on Facebook, X, and Instagram. So you let us know where you're watching, like Ira tonight in Swamico, Wisconsin. We give you a shout-out. And if you have any questions for the coach, send those along as well. Uh, the Boilermakers, after yesterday's defeat, 10-13 and 13 overall, 3-9 and nine in the Big Ten, and looking for the first Big Ten road win of the season against the Cats Wednesday night. We'll see what Purdue has in store at that 7.45 airtime and 8 o'clock tip. And we'll see what the coach has to say when we come back. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Feed to Stevenson. Going against Garzone. Stevenson up and around Garzone. Holmes in the post. She scored the first two points of this game. Good defense that time by Caitlin Harper. Jones looking for some space in the mid-range. Back out to Stevenson. The rainbow three drops. And if Moore McNeil is headed to the same place as Berger's at, it's a good sign, but Purdue answers. Now this Assembly Hall crowd starting to put it on, but a nice slip and a pass to McKenna Layden for two of the easiest points she'll have all year. I mean, in a game like this where they're collapsing the inside and you have Bargesser on the perimeter, a girl that's positioning, yep, and you'll see it right there inside the restricted area. Point blank wide open. Why not go for three? It's her third triple today. She leads all scores with 14 points. As Caitlin Harper responds on the other end. I, I, I'm in disbelief seeing Scalia left that wide open, but Boilermakers catch a big break right there. Mary Ashley Stevenson goes right up and through the body of Garzone for the deuce. Being able to finish through contact like that with phenomenal concentration. Garzone just draped all over. Down low, it's McKenzie Holmes. She's got 11, met at the apex by Jayla Smith. What a game that'll be when they square off once again here in the hall. That's one that everybody in the Big Ten has circled on their calendar. Sanvik foul, or not fouled, blocked up top rather. Lamondola finds Holmes who cannot hit the layup as Janae Terry grabs it for Purdue. Terry into the corner. Swanson got it. Ashley Stevenson. Stevenson takes the J and nails it right in front of Joel Stevenson open for a second down low. Now she's doubled, fires it over to Swanson, and Swanson hits another three. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Joined by the head coach who is sporting her Kansas City Chiefs shirt. We'll get the Chiefs in the next set. My congratulations and all that stuff. But, Thank you. Uh, I, I can't do it in the first segment. You just got to give me a little grace period I here to get it. over that. Uh, all right, let's get right to it. Uh, we'll talk about the game yesterday against Indiana, a, game, a team that you had really played toe-to-toe -to -toe with in Mackey Arena uh, just three weeks ago and, and actually got off to a fairly good start. It was a close game after one quarter. Uh, it was still a five- or six-point game midway through the second, and then uh, they started hitting their three-point shots, and the, kind of the wheels fell off from there. Yeah, um, you know, just – we competed really, really hard um, when we played them up here um, and did that for, like you said, for about 15 minutes. Uh, last five minutes of the second quarter, we had five turnovers, um, and they pushed it to 11 and, and thought, you know, as bad as we were playing, it was still an 11-point game. Right. You know, you come out, uh, we get a stop on the first possession, run a, run a great set, get a good look at the rim, miss it, uh, get another clean stop, miss another layup in transition. Um, you know, it's a 10-point game. Mackenzie Holmes rolls, misses the layup, four pe four of us in the rim. She gets the rebound, gets an and one. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I feel like the, just the wheels fell off. We just missed so many opportunities there in the third quarter early. Um, and then, it, you know, they hit four threes uh, in a row there in the third quarter. I think it was a 20 to six run at one time in the, in the third quarter. And uh, when I used it, my second time out for us. But, um, you know, they're, they're a really good team. And if you're not going to, 
play hard and compete every possession, they're going to make you look silly, and they did exactly that to well, us. Well, they hit, they hit 15 three-pointers in the game here, and you go down there thinking, well, maybe they're not going to do that twice in a row. Uh, they go 13 for 21 yesterday from three-point range. And you're playing horse out there, too. Yeah. Or defensively, yeah. Well, we, weren't, we weren't very good. Uh, let's talk about uh, a couple of bright spots. So Mary Ashley Stevenson offensively gave you 16 points. She was named today the co-freshman of the week in the Big Ten. Uh, she averaged 20 and a half points and five rebounds, shot better than 62%, hit 10 of 11 free throws in the win over Illinois and the lost Indiana. She scored in double figures 12 times. That's the most for a Purdue freshman since 1718, and this is the second time she's won that award. I know she has some work to do still on the defensive end, but you have to love the fact that she's a kid that wants the basketball every game. Yeah, she's just getting better, and she continues to work. Um, you know, she's in the gym, you know, once, twice a week, uh, trying to get workouts in. Um, and, and she earned it. And, and on top of that, you know, she's playing with a broken nose, has surgery Tuesday morning. Um, Wednesday, Thursday were, like, just not great days for her. Um, didn't know if she was going to be able to go through practice on Friday. She hadn't been really able to eat anything. And Friday goes to the doctor, and whatever they have in her nose, they finally pull it out of her nose. Um, you know, just a, a tough couple days. And for her to, to come back and respond and – um, put up numbers for us uh, and, and, and just play, you know, just just go out there and, and compete and play really hard. Um, Got to love uh, number 20 being on our team. Well, we mentioned uh, a lot of times over the, t the years that the best ability you have sometimes in college sports or any sports is availability and the fact that she was willing to play yeah. the night before she has her surgery and then she's willing to play a few days after the surgery and, and she's giving you everything she's got. Yeah, she is every single day. Um, she's just a, a special kid and um, someone, like I said, like I, I can't say it enough. I'm, I'm glad she's on our team for the rest of this year and the next three years. Um, you know, she's going to continue to work and grind and, um, you know, hopefully have a really, really special career here. You don't have a lot of weeks like the week you've got right now where you play basically three games in a week. You played yesterday, you play again Wednesday, you play again Saturday. Yeah. So you've got two days in between. What has the schedule or what will the schedule be like this week? This is a this is a pretty tough week. Obviously, a bus trip to, to Indiana and I, obviously not a not a but not a not a far one. But uh, we, we practiced today, um, watched a lot of film from the IU game, uh, a lot of fundamental drills there on the defensive end, um, some toughness stuff today. Uh, but we, we, we practice tomorrow and then we get back on a bus. Uh, and so obviously play Wednesday night. Um, bus home late right eight o'clock tip our time we'll get home late so Thursday won't be able to do a whole lot right so it'll be like we've played Nebraska um obviously just recently so uh scout wise not much has will have changed um you know you are who you are this time of the year so um we'll be light on Thursday and and, and then try to pick it up on Friday but we just got to be as fresh as we can to give ourselves the best chance we can win a couple of things back from yesterday before we put that one to bed. I thought you know, Caitlin Harper really fought inside against Mackenzie Holmes. She needed to have 17 points to break the school scoring mm. record. She had to really work into the fourth quarter to get it. She only shot 7 to 14 from the field. Yeah, uh, Caitlin has battled uh, Mac for, for, you know, as many times as we played him uh, over the past two years with Caitlin. Uh, you know, it was, it was actually one of our goals. We want to make sure she, did, she didn't get it against us. We, we tried to – Tried to make sure she wasn't getting it against us, but Max tough. Um, th there, I think we subbed Caitlin in in the fourth quarter. I think they ran three or four sets to try to give her that uh, – to get it to her, and they finally got it out of a timeout. But um, Caitlin's tough, man. She she battled. Um, you know, we've got – we did a good job in the first half of throwing the ball inside to her and, and, and Mary Ashley and, and kind of got away from that in the second half. So we got to make sure we keep pounding it into those guys. One last thing, and we talked about this yesterday after the game. She gets a lot of credit, and deservedly so, and Sarah Scally, and they've got some players, Sydney Parrish, who we think uh, may be coming back here soon for Indiana in the next game or two. Chloe Moore McNeil, mm. I believe, is the most underrated player in the She's conference. She's unreal. She's unbelievable. And, and you don't even see it, like, in, it, to, be, to be able to witness it firsthand, the way she leads her team, um, the way she talks to her teammates, the way she inspires them, the way she motivates them, the way she pushes them, the way she puts them in the right spot. Um, I think about three years ago when we first played him here, I, I mean, she, I think she banked a three and in transition uh, late in the second half, but wasn't even on, like, the team, like, was barely playing. And the work she has put in to come out and, you know, last year we didn't guard her, and this year she's, what, five for five in the second game we play him, three for five from the three. Uh, she's just – She's continued to work and, and saw she had some defici deficiencies and just worked her butt off to, to make sure that those were her strength. And, um, yeah, Chloe is the, the glue to, to that ball club, no doubt. 
All right, we're going to talk more about Purdue basketball when we come back. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Right here at the top of the screen, Dalton. needs a little playing time so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana talking with the head coach here and uh, by the way we will have Chaz Callaway coming up a little bit later on in the show he is our strength and conditioning coach and he's going to talk about how to pump you up mm, exactly. <laughs> at home tonight. Exactly. So, uh, all right, uh, and well, let's, let's give congratulations where congratulations are due. Your Kansas City Chiefs won their third Super Bowl yesterday. Um, game that certainly went down to the wire. Um, how nervous were you and how confident were you at the end? Um, always confident. And, and I, I think I went back to December, uh, called my cousin who lives out in Topeka, and I was like, you just we never wavered because – 15 is our quarterback and Andy Reid is our coach and you just always knew that never a doubt like you just always knew they were yeah. gonna have a chance uh, I, and we're, one of the reasons I'm bringing it up obviously Katie's a big fan but there was a strategy thing yesterday that a lot of people are talking about yeah. today it's a new rule in the NFL and it's the overtime playoff rule so basically it used to be in the old old days you had the coin flip, whoever scored first won. Right. Then it was you have the coin flip. If the one team scores a touchdown, the first team, they win. Right. But the other, if not, they get a field goal, then the other team gets the ball. Right. Now they've basically adopted part of the college rule where both teams are going to get the ball in overtime. Now right. they, do it, they start it with a kickoff. So the question becomes, if you win the coin toss, do you go on defense first or do you go on offense first? Yeah, you S kick it. San Francisco won the toss, and they took the football. Yeah. Now the, the the disadvantage there is you don't know you know if in, in you don't know what you need so in their case they kicked a field goal then Kansas City knew they had to score a touchdown on the flip side of that let's say both teams score a touchdown in their opening drive can San Francisco is going to get the ball again right. unless Kansas City goes for two and Andy Reid said after the game or somebody said if if they had both scored a touchdown in overtime and Kansas City was second, they were going to go for two to win the game. Yeah, I think I think Drew Tranquil um, was interviewed, a uh, linebacker, uh, actually from Fort Wayne native, um, and he said during their prep, that's what that's what their strategy was. Um, and the 49ers, it seems like they didn't really have the same kind of prep that the, the Kansas City Chiefs when it came down to. But we have the Buffalo Bills to, to thank for that rule change. Um, so... Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, I, I, you know. Can we get part of the Super Bowl? <laughs> can we touch it? Can we touch the Lombardi Trophy? You got, hey, man, <laughs> it's, 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 it's stay healthy. It's okay. it's, it's, you got to be lucky. You got to stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got you got the quarterback. Um, 
All right, I do want to bring this back to basket. But by the way, before I do that, let me say hello to uh, Shelly from Indianapolis, John from Littlestown, Pennsylvania, Linda from Grand Haven, Michigan, and Peggy from St. Louis. So thank you again for tuning in. All right, a couple of things yesterday that I wanted to talk to you about. One is I, we were listening on the drive home yesterday, Jane Schott, and I listened to the Michigan State-Ohio State game. Cody McMahon picked up three fouls in the first quarter. Mm. She picked up two fouls and then got a technical with a minute left in the quarter. So she had to sit. Basically, she sat the rest of the second quarter, first quarter, and the entire second quarter. J.C. Sheldon picked up her third foul midway through the second quarter. Mm. So basically, they played the last five minutes of the first half without them. They, they were up 20 or 30 at the half. It was kind of ridiculous. Then the question coming back out and the, the announcers were debating was, do you, if both those kids then have three fouls, do you start them in the second half when you're leading by 20 or 25? And it was unanimous with them, they should start. Yeah, I think it just depends on who your players are and can you trust them. Um, you know, I think for us, Mads and JT got two fouls in the first quarter, took them out, um, didn't want the game to, to get out of reach for us, and you just trust them that they can play and compete um, and not pick up a third one. So, you know, J.C. Sheldon's a fifth year. Uh, Cody's a sophomore and plays really hard, but uh, it's hard to keep your best players off the floor. Yeah, and, and I think you showed yesterday with, with both JT and with Madison that you have to, you have to trust them because, like you said, you, in the first half especially, you can't let the game get away. But I do think there are players that, especially younger players, that it's hard to trust out there that they're not going to pick up that third foul. Oh, absolutely. There's there's players on our team that uh, would probably sit the bench the the rest of the half, um, and then players we feel like we can we can trust and play out there, but still not losing you know defensive principles. So I think that's true for for every every team across the country. All right, that's first half strategy. I want to ask you a second half strategy question. I'm watching a men's game. The other night, one, let's see, Team A is ahead by three points. Mm -hmm. So Team B's got the ball. Team A fouls yep. with se like 17 seconds left in the game. Too early. Uh, that's exactly what I thought. And, and they wound up, I think they wound up winning, but yeah. it was one of those where they had to make a whole bunch of plays down the stretch. Do you have a hard and fast rule in that situation if you're up three? Too it, early. Um, and you gotta, you got to look at your own team. Like, we're not a great rebounding team, so do we foul and give up an offensive rebound and lose the game? Right. Um, you know, I don't know. I, you know, obviously analytics comes into that and, and, and whatnot, but, you know, it's – yeah, 17 seconds is way too early. you got to be able to guard and defend and, uh, um, you know, yeah, that's – because now the game is just extended and you've got to make free throws. On, are you a good free throw shooting right, team? Like, right. you got to be able to make them on the other end. you got to be able to box out and – and take care of the basketball. That's uh, 17 seconds way too early. And, and I get the thing that the coaches don't want a three to tie or beat them at the end, but remember that most often two-thirds of the three-point shots are missed. Yeah, and it's easy to switch things on the perimeter. Right. Um, I lost a, a big paycheck in Europe because our coach had us foul up three. The kid missed the – or made the first one, missed the second one, long rebound, three beat us at the buzzer, lost me a very big paycheck in Europe. So a little salty there. Kinda, yeah, that kind of goes into my theory <laughs> on, on whether you foul or not. <laughs> hey, you live, you learn, right? <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Purdue crowding hobby. She didn't have much room to move. Side to Caitlin Harper, this team's second leading scorer, and she has been terrific. Especially because Michigan defends at such a high level. Inside, and there is Marianne. Terry, Ooh. oh, sips it in to Caitlin Harper. Illinois has to get a paint touch every possession. They're settling for contested threes. Ellis tries a three. Got it. That was so smooth. That behind the back dribble gave her enough space. Hello. Behind the back jumper. Oilers, because she's scoring on the interior at will. Off the dribble, stays patient, feels where the defense is. That patience. Oh, he's really packing in the paint right now. Or inside the three point line. Layton carries a triple. She was 0 for 6 in the first half. She puts herself in positions to score right there. Kendall Boston. The line, I need to get her open looks from three. Terry, open look. Pays it off. Thorn in the side of the Eli Nine, in the third quarter, making everything work with her patience, poise, and distance. Alice a three. There is Stevenson with a left hand, counted in the foul does not stop working. 
gets the rebound, regathers, balance, shoulder squared, and one. You have to finish with contact. Open three. Harper puts it in. Got into foul trouble earlier, but she still comes in. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Purdue Global has produced accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Do want to mention, uh, the Boilermakers playing at home on Saturday at 4 o'clock. The Boilermaker Network has asked me to remind uh, their folks that there will be a reception after the game at the William H. Daniel Turf Research Center. That's on 1340 Cherry Lane. It'll be an hour after the game, and they're going to have a Q&A with Janae Terry and Caitlin Harper. So if you want to come out and talk to Janae and Caitlin, it'll be after the game on Saturday at the Daniel Turf Research Center. That's just past the clubhouse now on the roundabout on Cherry Lane. Um, we're always looking at uh, the, the present, and I have coaches, especially when you've got three games in a week, it's hard to look past an hour from now. You do have some help coming in next year in the, in the high school recruiting class. You've got three recruits coming in. Let's give an update again of what can people expect starting with Jordan Poole from Fort Wayne. Yeah, Jordy's just somebody who can really, really play in a, in a ball screen. Um, she can put pressure and She's a great passer, can shoot it. Um, just a competitor um, on both ends of the floor. Unfortunately, her season ended uh, in regional, just came up a little bit short. Um, but uh, really proud of her and, 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 and honestly just, I think, like a lot of our young kids, uh, the the people are just going to – you're going to fall in love with, with Jordy and her flair for the game. Kendall Purrier comes to you from the St. Louis area, and she brings aggressiveness, yeah. toughness. Yeah, KP, uh, Ch Chiefs fan, big Chiefs fan, so uh, love that all about her. By so. the way, Coach was telling me during the timeout – your text today, George Karloftis, yeah. Andy Reid. Yeah, big guys. So I got the celebrity here next <laughs> just, to us. Just told them good job, and they respond. There you go. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, KP's a, t a tough, tough physical, uh, rebounds well outside of her area. Um, like we said in, in the past, like black belt, like she's just mean and tough out there and, and physical, gun just a – Uber competitive, um, brother was undersized at Mizzou and finished with 1,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, play for Zoe. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I can't wait for her to get here. And then Lana McCarthy comes to you from New Hampshire, and one thing we know you can't teach is height, and she's got a lot of that. Yeah, and she's got all of it. She's all of 6'4". Um, we, we joke she's kind of built like Mark, just kind of like that boxy set. Um, feet, really good feet, um, can, can guard b ball screens multiple ways, rebounds well outside of her area. Um, we'll have an op both of those guys, all three of them, will have an opportunity to, to, to play a lot of minutes early. Well, and another player who's actually going to be part of that class now because she's redshirting this year, Amaya Reynolds, and yeah. we've seen in practice what she's capable of doing. Yeah, she's a special. Um, her understanding of the game, uh, even from sitting out and, and watching, and she's starting to, to get in some reps with us. Um, she, she tears our world up when, when she's on the scout team, but um, getting in some reps with us, uh, her leadership, just the way she kind of commands the floor, uh, you, you just can't teach something like that. All right, Chaz Calloway is going to join us next. He is our strength and conditioning coach with women's basketball. It's the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Which guarded by Ware. Zach's three, your perspective? Yeah, I didn't know what, they, they did that without my knowledge, so. <laughs> so, yeah. He you're missed it so, He missed it so bad it went in. To see one go down in a game for him, and what's, what's that uh, 
What's that mean for you guys to see it happen? Yeah, well, I passed it, so I, I was, <laughs> I, I'm go with it. So, I mean, it, he told me the timeout before or when we were out before, and he was like, hey, hit me on the, hit me on the pop. And, like, I kind of just giggled. I was like, dude, we're only, like, up 20. Like, what are you doing? And, hey, it worked, so. I'm, I'm the best shooter in the country, so I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> he deserves it, though. He deserves it. Like, he, he comes every night, and he competes, and he plays hard, and, you're always kind of just waiting for him, not to, you know, one night just have it. But even though he didn't, like, shoot a great percentage again, I think a lot of that had to do with Khalil Ware's size and his length. Um, but Zach's a competitor, man. He, he plays hard every night. On a switch. To the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Lafayette Limo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare Airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. One of the nice things about the coaches show every week is we get a chance to talk to some of the people who are a little bit more behind the scenes, and this is one of those gentlemen here. Chaz Calloway is in his second season at Purdue. He's in his first as the strength and conditioning coach with the women's basketball team. Before we talk about your time here, how did you get into this business, Chaz, in the first place? Um, so it started when I was at uh, University of Cincinnati. I was an undergrad student there, and then I, I was really good in exercise science and stuff like that. And my friends were like, hey, could you train me? And eventually I started doing those things, and they're like, you know what, you're really good. Like, you're pushing me through those mental barriers and stuff like that. And I'm like, uh, they're like, you should probably do this as a profession. I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, and then eventually started doing some digging and then I found like, oh, you can, athletes have coaches, yeah. <laughs> you know, they actually lift. And so um, when I started exploring those opportunities, led to internships and then found that I really actually do enjoy, you know, training athletes, pushing them past those, those mental barriers, you know, working with them um, through the in-season, off-season, those kind of things and really building a quality uh, product to, to, go, to go out there on the uh, field and things like that so were you an athlete in high school um so yeah i played uh football i did not run track but i participated in track um so uh football was main main sport though uh then uh so you go to cincinnati you, you get a couple of degrees there right you got a, both a bachelor's and a master's yes, degree yes, and then sir. and then you actually you worked for the bearcats for a few years yep so uh during my stint at uc pretty much i worked with all the sports i mean every single last one um, got to a point where I was pretty much having seven teams to myself. Um, and so as I finished up uh, my career there, I uh, finished with baseball and then um, helping out with uh, women's golf as well. Well, I'm looking at the list here. It says <laughs> baseball, women's <laughs> lacrosse, men's and women's golf, and track and field. Let's talk, let's look at baseball and lacrosse, yeah. the difference. What are the different things that you're working on in those two sports in particular, and how are they different? Uh, I mean, well, the main thing with the uh, teams that I were, was working with at UC was baseball was obviously men, um, and then for lacrosse it was the women's team. Um, so you just have two different, literally you have two different genders. Um, so you just have to, the approach is still the same. Um, I always say this, like I'm going to treat a male the same, I'm going to treat a female, and I'm going to have that intensity, right, because they're both going to value that. Um, and so there really wasn't, to be honest with you, there really wasn't a difference. Um, I just coach the crap out of them. Uh, and and I, th I would assume then that, that the, the female athletes that you've coached in, enjoy that and they embrace that. I would mm -hmm. think that they want to get the best out of themselves. So just no different than the men. Yeah, that's the, uh, so I'm an internship coordinator uh, at Purdue and one of the things that I tell my interns is that when you build that quality relationship with your student athletes, you find that those uh, relationships like go on further um, and you find that they come to you, you know, for advice and it's like, oh, I didn't realize I was that impactful. And I think that intensity that I did bring and that fairness, um, that equality, you know, they really honored that and they respected that, they wanted that. Um, and that's one of the things that like I put, put my stamp on when I go to programs and when I leave programs, it's, it's just like, hey, I built that relationship with your student athlete. I was able to help them out more in more ways than one. We had Mark Stevens on the show last week and we talked about the benefits sometimes of playing different sports. We see mm -hmm. so much today, there's specialization. A lot of kids from the time that they're, they're in grade school or, or teenagers on, they're playing one sport. From a strength and conditioning standpoint, do you have a feeling of the, what's the better path for a student growing up, or is it an individual thing? Um, I would definitely say uh, to over-specialize as a youth would probably not be the go-to. Um, you, you know, as you're developing and growing, you want to have as much exposure uh, to different movements and different patterns. And so if you're always, you know, swinging on the right side, you know, you're going to become right dominant. Um, so, you know, the more exposure you can give um, that adolescent, the more adaptable they're going to be, um, and the more, uh, if you want to go down the science route, um, you know, their soft tissue um, and their muscles, that quality is going to actually improve and get 
better. And then as they get older, that's when you can kind of start, you know, dialing down on like, what sport do you want to do, like obviously for college and those kind of things. But, you know, in the middle school, high school, like have them playing a whole bunch of sports. Well, and you, you've talked about the physical, but I think also we have to look at the mental aspect. You mm -hmm. don't want a kid getting burned out on a sport at 12 years old. Oh, yeah. yeah that's the <laughs> And we see it all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, yes, that versatility, you know, if you're having them exposed to different sports, you know, they're dealing with different coaches, different athletes, different cultures. There's a slew of um, opportunities that, that they're going to see that they probably never knew they would obtain if they just stayed with that one sport. All right, we're talking with Chaz Calloway about uh, strength and conditioning. We'll talk about what he does with the women's basketball program when we come back. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. Feed to Stevenson. Going against Garzone. Stevenson up and around Garzone. Holmes in the post. She scored the first two points of this game. Good defense that time by Caitlin Harper. Jones looking for some space in the mid range. Back out to Stevenson. The rainbow three drops. And if Morgan McNeil is headed to the same place as Burger's at, it's a good sign, but Purdue answers. Now this Assembly Hall crowd starting to put it on, but a nice slip and a pass to McKenna Layden for two of the easiest points she'll have all year. I mean, in a game like this where they're collapsing the inside and you have Bargesser on the perimeter, a girl that's positioning, yep, and you'll see it right there inside the restricted area. Point blank wide open, why not go for three? It's her third triple today. She leads all scores with 14 points. As Caitlin Harper responds on the other end. I, I, I'm in disbelief seeing Scalia left that wide open, but Boilermakers catch a big break right there. Mary Ashley Stevenson goes right up and through the body of Garzone for the deuce. Being able to finish through contact like that with phenomenal concentration. Garzone just draped all over. Down low, it's McKenzie Holmes. She's got 11, met at the apex by Jayla Smith. What a game that'll be when they square off once again here in the hall. That's one that everybody in the Big Ten has circled on their calendar. Sandvik foul, or not fouled, blocked up top rather. Lamondola finds Holmes who cannot hit the layup as Janae Terry grabs it for Purdue. Terry into the corner. Swanson got it. Ashley Stevenson. Stevenson takes the J and nails it right in front of Julie Stevenson open for a second down low. Now she's doubled, fires it over to Swanson, and Swanson hits another three. Holmes got that bucket of Swanson. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Ariana Harris had 14 points and seven rebounds, along with two blocks for Sp her Spaniard team in a 61 to 58 loss over the weekend. So they are now four and 13. Aya Traore did not play with her professional team because she and Fatou Dion were playing for Senegal in the Olympic qualifier. Unfortunately, Senegal lost all three of its games. Its first one was tight, 72-65 to Nigeria. They lost to Belgium, 97-66. And then yesterday, the U.S. Uh, just nipped them, 101-39. to uh, Fatou in those three games, though, averaged 3.7 points and 4.7 rebounds, so she played pretty well. Aya did not play very much and averaged less than a point and a rebound a game. But again, uh, congratulations to Fatou and Aya for uh, representing their country in the Olympic qualifier for Senegal. We're talking with Chaz Calloway. He is the strength and conditioning coach for the basketball team. And let's t get into some specifics. I want to start on the cycle of the year. So we're about four to six weeks away from the end of the season. Yep. What will you do from the end of the season through the summer to keep this team conditioned and keep them ready to go? Uh, so, I mean, as far as the conditioning aspect, um, you know, the starters are pretty much they're going to have their conditioning. Um, but we do a lot of game day uh, conditioning. So if a team or if a player did not get 20 minutes, you know, we kind of fill the bucket on that end. Um, and there's – pretty much three different uh, types of actual conditioning aspects that I can do based off of what we have with practice or 
you know, if we have a tight schedule where we, the turnover is going to be quick, and I think like um, that that players might get more minutes that next game. You know, I might adjust some things on that end, but we have you know pretty much a way to fill that bucket for the needs when it comes to conditioning. Great players are made during the summertime. What do you need them all to do in the summer to become better players and better athletes? Uh, so the big thing all of us strength coaches, you know, not struggle with, but we try to control the most of is that time period when they go home. You know, yeah. uh, what does that summer packet look like? So I try to put a lot of work, a lot of effort into educating them throughout the whole entire time that they're with me. So that way, when I give them that summer packet, it's not just a whole new brand of training. It's something that they've already know, they're familiar with, and they're comfortable with. That way, they can do it to the best of their ability. That way, when we come back, then I'm just building on that. Obviously, once you have the freshmen, you know, you have to take them through the, uh, the paces. But, you know, it's always going to be that uh, returning class that, continues to build and you know we have a great class coming back that I'm actually really excited for um, uh, new freshmen coming in as well um, you know it's just going to add to it so it's, it's going to get intense. Yeah we talked about the three freshmen when will you be able to I, I would assume they'll be on campus then the the three that we just talked about with mm -hmm. Katie a couple of minutes ago mm -hmm. I assume you'll be able to get a hold of them in the summer and get them yep. started on their, on their program. Yep so uh, no confirmed date when the summer will start but I'm pretty sure like June 13th around there and that's you know pretty much we're rolling you know my big thing um, is being tenacious having confidence being uh, having perseverance and giving effort um, so like from day one those are the things that they're that I'm coaching them on and that we're work, constantly trying to work on because um, confidence you know if you, overconfidence is one thing but when you are confident in your skills you put um, time into your craft you know it's very hard for you someone to knock you off that pedestal we talk about strength and conditioning and they both have to be a vital part of what you what you need to get done you have to be strong to play in the Big Ten even if you can run up and down the floor for 40 minutes but get pushed over like a feather it doesn't help yeah. and also if you can push everybody around but can only play 30 seconds at a time <laughs> so how do you draw that balance between strength and conditioning um, so that's why I take a lot of pride in my background um, so if you look at you know sports like football work capacity uh, one of my great mentors he understood that in order for an athlete to be able to ha sustain those longer drives or those longer plays, you know, they need to have work capacity. So I'm big on circuits. Um, there's been a lot of times I uh, try to coin it a little bit. We had prime time on Fridays. Um, and I changed that to show time um, to kind of mimic, you know, prime time is when we need to show up. So that's can be first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, whatever it needs to be. Um, but show time is when the game is on the line. And that kind of adapts um, as we go through the summer. So it's pretty much tr trying to make sure you know, they're getting that aggressive stimulus, but at the same time, like, the pace is up there. Um, and then, obviously, you know, the conditioning, the actual running component of will kind of fill the rest of that need. But, you know, if they can slam a 30-pound med ball for 30 seconds, rest for 15 seconds, do it again, do a battle rope, do an agility ladder, uh, do all of that in 45 minutes, like, <laughs> we get there. There you go. There you go. All right, give us a little inside info to, to finish it off. Give me a couple or three workout warriors that you have either players that have really improved over the last year or players that really stand above the others in terms of strength and conditioning um so i say for as far as improvement i think the five returners that we have had uh that we have um they've made great improvements just from what they look like this time you know previous years and just their conditioning um they feel better um uh, watching caitlin uh yeah watching caitlin kind of improve and as far as her mobility um especially with her you know being a six year like it's been awesome to be a part of that. Um, Abby Ellis, you know, with her being small, my thing with her was, you know, you're going to be small, you're going to be getting up and down. Like, I need you to be resilient, yeah. you know. Um, and then, obviously, Rashonda, um, she's another small one. And, but, you know, with her attacking the mentality, it's like I need you to be, to be able to, to sustain, you know, getting knocked around by those post players. And I think it's only going to get better with her because now she has an understanding. Um, but those are like my main ones, I would say. All right. Well, usually I sit behind Chaz on the flights. It's good to see the side of his head <laughs> instead of the back of his head. Thanks for the work you're doing with basketball, and I know things are going to get a lot better here in the near, near future. 100%. Thank All you. All right. Coach will be back with us next. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Purdue crowding hobby. She didn't have much room to move. Side to Caitlin Harper, this team's second leading scorer, and she has been terrific. Especially because Michigan defends at such a high level. Inside, and there is Marianne. Terry, Ooh. oh, zips it in to Caitlin Harper. Illinois has to get a paint touch every possession. We're settling for contested threes. Ellis tries a three. 
Got it. That was so smooth. That behind the back dribble gave her enough space. Hello. Behind the back jumper. Oilers, because she's scoring on the interior at will. Off the dribble, stays patient, feels where the defense is. That patience. Oh, is really packing in the paint right now. Or inside the three point line. Layton parries a triple. She was 0 for 6 in the first half. She puts herself in positions to score right there. Kendall Boston. The bounce. The line, I need to get her open looks from three. Terry, open look. Pays it off. Thorn in the side of the Illini in the third quarter, making everything work with her patience, poise, and distance. Alice a three. There is Stevenson with a left hand, counted in the foul. Does not stop working. Gets the rebound, regathers, balance, shoulder squared, and one. You have to finish with contact. Open three. Harper puts it in. Got into foul trouble earlier, but she still comes in. That is pure. Good job by Purdue. Crowding Hobby. She didn't have much room to move. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Norman from Pearland, Texas is uh, checking in. You've been very up front and, and I think very honest with your appraisals this year, and there's a question about why the team has regressed a little bit from last year, and I think the first thing is you have to look and say, we lost a couple of pretty good players and leaders in Cassidy Harden and Laisha Petrie, and they've been very difficult to replace. They, they have been. Um you know, I, our non-conference schedule was a little bit more difficult uh, this year, so we didn't have the, what, 9-1, and 10-1 and one we had in the non-conference last year. Um, and then we just haven't been very good on the road. And I think that, that we were good on the road last year. We had, like, our senior leadership was really, really good. Uh, Cass, Laisha, Ricky, you're talking about, you know, three competitors and two fifth years of regular senior, but just like pure competitors um, that knew what it took to, to win on the road. And um, we replaced them with young kids. Um, and, and we knew that this was going to be a, a roller coaster. I don't think that we quite saw it going this way. Um, but our, our schedule hasn't done us any favors, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it can it can turn away around here in, in February if we can if we can compete really hard. But um, you know, the, the Big Ten is tough, and, and we, we needed, you know, just some more experience maybe on the road, but we wanted to make sure we, you know, there was an end game here. Um, it wasn't just about trying to win right now, but it's about winning um, in the future and setting the program up to, to be successful. And can you go into the portal and get, you know, you know a, a fifth year, a fifth year, a fifth year with some experience, but do they bleed Purdue? Do they love Purdue? Um, the way our young kids are loving mm -hmm. Purdue. Um, if we can keep this group together and start just stacking classes behind it, you think like by 2026, 2027, you know, we've stacked some classes together. They've been in the trenches together. Um, they know they know what it takes. Like, trust me, like these young kids, they don't want to experience this again. And, and it's going to be a motivating factor for us in the, in, in the offseason. And we can't talk about players that have not signed, but you're talking about stacking <coughs> classes. And I know some of the kids that have not yet committed that you're on. And, and you know, the, we're talking about a lot of difference makers right now. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you mean you got to have players to win games. Uh, but um, at the same time, like, um, you just get a group that, that that's going to be together for a really long time. Um, you know, you, you, obviously, Caitlin Clark is a generational type player, like just transcendent to our game. Uh, but that Iowa team has been together. Mm -hmm. They've been in the trenches. And, you know, obviously, it'd be great to, to land someone like Caitlin Clark, don't get me wrong. But, like, that team has been together. There's, it, there's, it's not a coincidence that they went to the national championship game last yeah. year. Like, they've been together. And um, that's something that we wanted to replicate. Um, it's something that Matt's doing, right? And um, you look at what what he's done with his guys, w with his guys, and they've been together. I mean, he's got one. You know, Lance is like the perfect fill-in for for them, and and hopefully we can we can kind of replicate that. Well, message to the fans, and I think message to the team and the coaches: don't flinch. Better days are ahead. 
I, and it'll be nice if it starts I, on Wednesday it, night. It is. It's a. It's, it's been a really trying year uh, for all of us. Um, but uh, better days are ahead, and uh, I, I hope that the, the, when these seniors leave, I know for a fact, no matter what happens the rest of the year, they've left this program better than it was when they came here. All right, final segment of the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Right here at the top of the screen, Dalton. is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at PurdueFed.com. We've seen Nebraska. Let's talk quickly about Northwestern, a team that, like Purdue, is searching for some wins here late in the season. Yeah, um, but, you know, they just pounded the, the heck out of Wisconsin at home, uh, a team that's been competitive and plays really, really hard. And we talked about it with our group today. If we, if we have any kind of showing like we had in Bloomington, we don't stand a chance. So we've got to come ready to go and uh, give ourselves the best chance. Well, I'm looking forward to getting up there and uh, watching a, a road win. Let's get a road win. It would be nice. Um, you won't let us do it in game, like in Mackey. So um, we wanted to make sure you had a, a, a ball with well, your 1,000 you. game. Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate everything you do well, for our program, Well, I appreciate Tim. that. I've, yeah. I've always wanted the focus to be on the kids, and so well, I do appreciate this. It, yeah, it's uh, what you what you do for us is, is amazing, and uh, we wouldn't be where we are without you. Well, and I keep telling people, just as I told you, better days are ahead. Uh, we see what's on the horizon. We see what's in the pipeline, and, and it's hard to have patience sometimes at a time like this. But this is where you find out who your friends are, and you find out who's going to no stick doubt. with it, no and doubt. who really wants to be a Boilermaker and make something happen here. No doubt. I, I'm telling you, I'll stay with us. It's coming. It's coming. All right. KG, we'll see you Wednesday night. All right, Let's get a win. Time. All right. Thanks to, to our uh, on-site engineer, Wes Scott, and our producer, Roger Forsyth. Video by McCarty Cummings. We thank him for that. Again, we've only got three Katie Gerald shows left, and that's uh, next Monday night and then the two Mondays after that at 7.10. So make sure you get here to walk-ons. Uh, we'll have Matt Painter on, of course, beforehand at 6 o'clock and then the Katie at 7.10. Next broadcast coming up Wednesday night at 7.45. Jane Schott will join me in uh, Evanston as the Boilermakers take on the Wildcats. For Chaz Calloway, for Katie Gerald's, I'm Tim Newton. It's been the Katie Gerald Show on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Learfield.